And now I want to turn to uh, another build along that we're having tonight. Uh, this is with Daryl Jacobs with Interaction Hobbies, uh, building uh, one of his uh, garage kits. So Daryl, welcome. Okay, so um, last, I uh, apologize for not being there last week, but we'll continue on and uh, go to their, their second chapter here. Um, tonight, what we're going to cover is basically the front wall. And I say that because the front wall in this kit uh, covers just about every type of uh, construction technique that you're going to need to build all the other walls in the kit. Uh, from parts cleanup to uh, dealing with corner trim, uh, window and door assemblies, uh, assembling the wall, and corbels and freeze, uh, signage, and then dealing with light leaks because this kit is going to be lit from the inside. So the uh, freeze, or I think that's what it's called, I call it the decorative thingy on the top of the building. Um, it's actually made out of a couple layers of wood and uh, polyback. Um, the trick here when you come to this part is to make sure you keep your alignment of these various layers pretty square. I recommend picking all the parts out using the part sheet, uh, lay it all out so you know uh, which order the pieces go in um, to make sure you get the uh, correct layered effect when you're done. And then you just go along and sandwich layer and, and glue the layers together. Um, good time to talk a little bit about glue squeeze out. So as you're putting these parts together and compressing them, uh, you're going to get glue, uh, uh, a little bit of squeeze out of glue. Um, it's my, I, I'm really annoyed when I see models that people don't take the time to clean up all that glue mess along the way uh, because it really does detract from the model. So uh, the tip here is uh, I let the glue skin over slightly, uh, the PVA glue, and then remove the beads of glue with an exacto blade or scraper and kind of just clean up that surface. And then the other thing I do is once the glue is dried, I work it loose, any, any little glue spots or things that are left, I use a stiff dry brush to work that residue loose uh, from the paint surface. Um, so installing the corner trim, uh, typically in some of our kits, I recommend putting the corner trim in after you assemble the kit, that's your choice. Uh, I find it covers a lot more errors if you uh, put the corner trim in afterwards. You need to be a lot more accurate uh, putting it in ahead of time. In this particular uh, storefront, I uh, put it together um, as I'm putting the wall together, mainly because that top bar that goes across the top um, affects the, the corner trim. So it's important to keep your corner trim flush with the inside face of the, of the uh, building that takes up any errors that you get from the uh, variable thickness of the material. A 1 16th inch square trim is not always exactly 1 16th. Um, I like to use my nippers and nip, I glue the, um, uh, the trim to the sides and then I use my nippers after the glue's dried and, and nip them off a little bit long and then sand them flush and sand them square so you can assemble those uh, top freezes on the, on the building. So the corbel installation, those 3D printed corbels uh, that come with the kit after they're painted. Um, I just put a little spot of glue on them as you can see in the corner and then gently press in down and in. And I find that way I don't get very much glue squeeze out at all uh, as you're assembling it. A note on prepping parts. So when you're taking the laser cut polyback parts out of the uh, um, frets, uh, I like to say always use a new fresh blade, uh, sharper is better. And I find a little technique here is to turn your blade so that it's parallel uh, with the part edge, as you can see in the diagram in the lower, lower left here. Uh, what that does is that way you trim off the, the uh, nib as close as possible and you don't have that much work to clean up because some of these um, uh, mullions are pretty delicate. so. Once you got the partial nibs still on there, make sure you clean those nibs off the edge. Uh, otherwise, when you go to fit parts, you're not gonna have a nice tight fit in the, uh, in the openings. So window frames on clapboard. Um, this is probably more important than the O scale version. Uh, I like to recommend, uh, it's a little bit more work, but go in, put your window frame around the window opening um, where it's gonna be. I've even used tack adhesive to do that and then scribe it with an X-Acto blade uh, and then come back and clean up the, 
the leftover clapboard, as you can see in the, in the middle lower diagram, uh, just so your window frames sit in flush against the edge. And you'll see this a little later on why that, that can be important. Now it's, it's not necessary in the, in the HO scale one, you can definitely cover it up with a lot of paint or filler, but as the kits get bigger, uh, those clapboards and things, as you can see in the top, start, uh, start showing up the error quite a bit in here. So you work your way around the building on that, on all the trims. And um, like I say, it's your choice to rather keep it flush or inset it. So window glazing, the key here is you need glue, but not too much. And I also recommend being as accurate as you can with the frame over the glazing. Now these, our glazing comes laser cut and it comes with this annoying paper backing that some people don't like. Uh, what that actually paper backing does is actually protects the, at least one side of the glazing from your fingerprints. So I find it's very important. I leave that paper on until I'm just about ready to install. And then I make sure I don't touch it again with my greasy fingers. So a little technique that I use, I put some glue onto a, uh, a piece of paper and then I kind of just dab the, I dip the, the edges of the, uh, or the, the back face of the window frame in that. There's gonna be too much glue on that. So then I dab that glue off on the paper um, to get most of it off. And then I carefully place that on top of the, uh, the glazing. You can see I got a little bit of, of um, let's see if I can highlight this here. You can see we have a little bit of the glue squeeze out that's there. Again, wait until it's lightly skinned over. Don't use a really pointed item like a razor blade, but um, something slightly rounded, you can just take that little bit of glue squeeze right out while it's uh, there so you don't have that when you do the install. And then just before the installation, I like to go back and peel off the, uh, uh, the paper backing. Sometimes that backing also sticks to the edge because of the laser melts to the paper. So you kind of got to go in and kind of just gently scrape them, peel back. If you pull the paper right back, 180 degrees, it'll, it'll take care of that on the edges as well. So installing the windows, um, because these are kind of an unusual custom window to match the prototype, uh, they're inset, but inset towards the back of the, uh, the inside edge of the wall. And a trick here to do that is once you've got the single glazing on this window, the, the upper and lower uh, uh, mullions are, are uh, uh, glaze separately is I put some tape on the back of it and then I apply some glue just along the edge, outer edge of the uh, window using those glue applicators we talked about. So you're not on the front or back, but just on the edge. And then you can stick that in from the back side. So any, any glue squeeze out in here is gonna stay on the inside of the building and uh, you won't see it from the outside. Then on the third place, we go back again, add a little bit of glue around the edge to add the upper um, glazing and mullion in place. Hope that's not too confusing. So here's what I was talking about before. Uh, we wind up with a little bit of gap uh, between the uh, window frame and the edge. So we can use either filler or paint, uh, remembering to use thicker paint in here uh, that you can, where your paint should be not too thinned uh, because this is an edge grain. So it's gonna keep soaking up paint until you uh, get it sealed. You can also use sealers as well, but I find just a second coat of paint always works best for that. So here again, apologize for all the dust, but this model has been through a lot of trade shows. <laughs> this is my old, old kit not the one I'm doing. Um, so you can see the little gaps that are here along the edge. So just adding a little bit of paint or filler in there just kind of touches that up as you see on the right. And again, maybe it's being a little bit anal, but uh, kind of want to do the best job you can. So light leaks, as I mentioned before, um, you go back, hold it up. And I always recommend this as you're building it because usually I assemble the kit and then look at it and go, oh no, when I light it up, you can see gaps and things light coming through where it's not supposed to be. Uh, so you just wanna go back through and afterward just touch, touch that lower area up uh, in here just with a quick, quick dab of paint to seal that up and make sure there's no other gaps. Then moving along to the door and window assembly, uh, the door assembly, I should say, they're layered out of uh, two pieces of polyback uh, laser board. 
and one piece of glazing. So you just set and layer those as we've mentioned in the window and mullions before and set that in place using the same technique that uh, uh, we used on the uh, windows to put in the door from the back side of the building. Unless you're gonna have that door in an open position, which you might wanna glue in place be just before you put the roof on the building. So the celestial window above the door, um, as you can see here, I just leave the paper on until the very last moment uh, before we're taking it because your fingerprints always seem to show up everywhere on these after the fact. Screen door, this kit comes with a screen door with some tool fabric. So uh, first of all, I, I painted the tool an aluminum color. Um, if you want it more translucent, a tip here on this tool fabric is to paint it a lighter color if you want to see through it better. If you paint it a dark color, like dabbing it with a black paint, it makes it harder to see inside. Um, and depending what your, the effect you're trying to go for, you can do that. So what we do is we uh, dab, the, uh, dab a little bit of silver paint on a sponge and then sponge it onto the tall over top of a piece of paper. Uh, let that set up. Then uh, using our dabbing method, uh, dab it in some glue, blot all that glue off, otherwise you're gonna have a mess. And then put the, um, press that into the, um, the tool fabric. Uh, once I dry, just before it dries, I should say, once it's pressed in, flip it over. I added a little bit more glue along here and along the top piece and the edges here, just along the edges and dabbed it in with my finger, let that set and then just cut your window out, your door out and you wind up with a lovely little screen door. So that tool fabric that we include, you can mostly get it at a, a, a good note here is uh, if you look on Amazon for silk screen window material or silk screening material, uh, you get this nice fine fabric. So that kind of wraps up the front wall. Um, I think the uh, that covers uh, our tonight's episode and um, like I say, it sets us up for next week for assembly and uh, starting to deal with some of the interior features. So uh, with that, if there's any questions, I can certainly answer them if anybody's still awake. And with that, back to you, Jim. Well, Darrell, I really appreciate it. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful structure once you're finished with it. And that was, uh, that was a great lesson you gave on building the front of it. I think, I think there was a lot of good information. I, I never thought about using a sponge on the uh, the screen door uh, before. I, I think that's great. Great, thank you. <laughs>